Hello YouTube, Patrick here and this is my channel 1984. Here we have a Pentium 3 system and it has a GeForce 3 Ti200 in it and uh, we are going to try something I haven't seen people do. We're gonna hardware mod this card to identify as a GeForce 3 card. That's nothing new really. But the reason we're doing that is because we're then gonna try and flash it to working in, working in a Mac. The TI cards, the 200 and 500, usually don't work in a Mac. Even if you flash them with the with the GeForce 3 Mac firmware. But the thing is with the GeForce 3 card is that uh, the, it identifies itself through a hardware ID, which you can set with uh, some resistors. And then you have the BIOS, which determines clocks and so on. So we're gonna try and change both of them and see if we can actually use this as a GeForce 3 card and make it work in a Mac. As you can see here, we have a GeForce 3 TI200 in uh, the device manager and we're running at 200 MHz GPU and 460 MHz memory. And that's the GeForce 3 default clock speeds. And I have been uh, testing them out to make sure the card can actually handle GeForce 3 frequencies. The default on the TI200 is uh, 175 GPU and 400 MHz memory. Now if you have a good TI200 you will have uh, 500 MHz memory so that's not an issue and most GPUs can quite easily do 200 MHz. 220 MHz most of them do from my testing. So, But this is a pretty crappy card from my testing so 470 memory maybe. 480 doesn't work at the artifact, so uh, it's borderline acceptable for uh, GeForce 3 flash. Now we could uh, volt mod it to accept high clocks, possibly, or we could modify the BIOS. There are there seems to be tools to modify the BIOS for the Mac firmware, so that's one way if your card could come to these speeds. And obviously if you try something I do, it's on your own, uh, it's your risk to take. So, I might end up bricking this card, I don't know. We'll see. If this video is up, I'll probably then brick it, so. So, here we have our GeForce 3 TI200. So the first thing I have to do is remove the CPU, the, the cooler for the GPU. I like to use some electronic cleaner, it helps the solving uh, thermal paste. That way you can get rid of all of it. All of it. Figured we need we need to change the thermal paste anyway. It was kind of old and dry, and yeah. So once we have the heat sink off, we need to reapply it. So let's have a look here. Over here we have something called R18 and R19. So those are resistors. And normally people want to convert the GeForce 3 into a TI, like a TI500. And from what I have been re uh, been Seeing when I read up on this is that on a TI card we have R218 R218 here, a resistor here, and we have none here at R19. So by doing the reverse, we should actually turn a TI200 into an GeForce 3 card. And it come to, comes to the hardware ID, which I hope is the key to making this working in the Mac. 
So we're gonna start by removing the R19 uh, resistor and clean that area up and mount it at R18. We will apply some Amtec fluxing and then solder back the resistor in the new position. Thermal paste. So the card is ready to be tried out again and see how it if it works and shows up and all that. So we're back up and running again and uh, there were no issues. Uh, Windows wanted the drivers installed for a GeForce 3 card so and the drivers are the same as the TI200 so Windows installed the drivers rebooted. As you can see we have a GeForce 3 card according to Task Manager and it's running at TI200 speed so 175-400. Next step would be to actually first back up the firmware on the card, the bias on the card and then try to flash the Mac firmware on the BIOS to the card and uh, then try that out in a Mac and see if that actually works. So now we have changed the hardware ID, we want to uh, back up the BIOS on the card first so we can restore it. Uh, in case we have to restore it and we can't post it on any machine we should be able to do that with a PCI graphics card as a display adapter. But I have downloaded NVFlash 428 I tried this suggested, I think it was 315, but it couldn't read the EEPROM on this card, so I tried a couple of new versions, and this version supports this EEPROM. So we start by backing it up, so that's uh, NV Flash. Uh, I don't know what they want to call the virus. Uh, So let's see if we call it that and it should read it. And we have it there, the ROM. 8 kilobytes, I think. Yeah. So we have the backup now here. So we can save that in a safe place and uh, now we need to flash the card obviously and I'm gonna try to do that from DOS and I'm gonna look up the parameters for that. So we have booted up uh, the machine in the uh, save command uh, prompt here in DOS so we don't load anything that need. And I end the end flash directory. So we got our BIOS, it's called G4, gf3.rom, so g 3 And then we have a backup there. 
Uh, let's see here. I'm not 100% sure. I think we might need to add some overrides uh, because of hardware ID mismatches, but we'll find that out soon. Yeah, so PCI SIP system mismatch. Mm -hmm. Don't remember if that was the P option or the U option. I'll try again. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with both P and U. Yeah, and U. Let's treat that wrong. Uh, let's see what to say here. One wrong one is yep. doesn't match. Or from you about to write a new image to display that. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. So once this is fresh, we won't be able to boot this card on this PC. But like I said, uh, you could use a PCI card to get the image and then flash it back in theory. Flash update successful, compare entire ROM, compare ROM with successful non mismatch. So, what was flashed to the EEPROM, it read back the same thing as what's the ROM on the hard drive. Mm. Yeah. So, we can basically turn this system off now and move this card over to Mac and hope that works. But, uh, yeah, that's the theory. So, we begin by removing the EFOSH 2 MX card out of the system. Out. And then we put in the EFOS 3 card we flashed. to actually see if this posts. So here we are with the card mounted, so it's time for some testing now. We push the button. Shine. Good mix, I think. That would be super cool. We actually have image, that's interesting. I did a reboot because I want to make sure we actually got image on the bootloader. I was, uh, I never saw it, and uh, well, I never saw the machine clearly being in the very early stages of open firmware boot, so did a reboot to get my boot menu here with my operating systems. You can actually see I installed Linux uh, lately, been messing with that. So I'm gonna boot it up again because this clearly shows at least we have picture, so we don't need any drivers to have an image at least. So Halo is running and I've been testing it out for a little while. And I can see some glitches here and there. I think the v uh, VRAM still gets still a li little bit overclocked. So we're looking in to see if I can lower the clock speed, but uh, I couldn't really figure out the program. It seems to work for GeForce 2 MX and uh, an 8500. So I've decided I should increase the VMAM a little bit. Since this is a reference board, I have a guide and mod for that. So I think uh, hopefully that will uh, sort out any memory graphical issues. So here we are again with the card. And this is uh, at least very close to a reference card. So this volt mod is for, our, is for a reference card I'm going to do. Our voltage regulator are here. This is for the GPU. And we have one over here that's for memory. So the controller is called SC1175CS. So there's data sheets for that. 
And uh, if you want to do the V core one, you need to put a 1K resistor over pin 18, which is the top right corner here. And if you have the notch here in the middle, so that's the top right corner. And then this third from the top, which is number 18. So you got 20 at the top. I might do it wrong there, but 20 at the top, and then you got 18. So you need to skip one. You put a, three, a 1K resistor over there. Want to do the V core mod, and over here, you basically do the same thing. You do a 1K from the 20 pin to the 18 pin over here, and uh, then you do number 3 pin, which is from the left here, to the 10 pin, which is on the bottom right corner here. And that's the one I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do the GPU right now. And the thing with the, the GeForce 3 series of cards is that the TI200 has the lowest V-Core and VMAM. The GeForce 3 is the, has the medium V-Core and VMAM and then the TI500 has the highest. So I'm not too worried about burning out the card, so to speak. Increasing the voltage on this particular one since it's more or less an undervolted card from factory. One thing I want to point out though, if you do this mod, is that uh, I really need to clean the flux away if it's, if it's not of a no clean type, or it's gonna mess with your card when you try to use it. So, I turn the corner around now, so this is uh, number 20 pin over here. So I think we start with that. I'm gonna use some Antec no clean flux. I have our sister prepared here. Let's see how that fits. Well, the spacing is right. So like I said, number three from the left and the bottom right there. So these resistors are 1K and that's the recommended. When I checked, you can go with something else there. Uh, it's a guide and you can calculate so you can get your own voltage you what you want. So, even if I have no clean flux, I'm going to clean this properly so I don't get any issues.
So there's the mod. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but that should work. So we have to try it out now. So I mounted the card with the Volt mod to the mem memory and uh, played through the first part of Halo and I haven't seen a single artifact so far. So the, I'm pretty sure the Volt mod uh, did some really good there on the stability on the memory. So I did some uh, benchmarking so we can compare the GeForce 3 TI200 clocked at GeForce 3 speeds now to a GeForce 2 MX that I had before. So on the top graph here we have uh, Halo and uh, the blue bar at the top is the GeForce 3 card and you can see that with the vertex shaders enabled we have a 10 frame uplift so around 40% something a pretty big gain in Halo uh, I tested with the uh, vertex shaders off and it was like one and a half frame up so it was like 26 and a half or 27 and a half I think so it's uh, a lot faster with uh, shaders which is the feature of the GeForce 3 series, series cards that uh, distinguish them from the GeForce 2 cards Unreal Tournament no real difference is doesn't seem to be very well optimized uh, for the G4 so no real difference there and Quake 3 we can see an uplift about 11 almost 12 frames so that's a nice little boost there and then we have Quake 2 and it's not much of an uplift compared to my one of my E2 cards it's a little bit hit and miss that game too the results varies a lot fine but it's uh, pretty much the same I also did play some Unreal Tournament 2004 and it seems to be a little bit quicker so unless you're playing games that can use the vertex shaders there's little point in running a GeForce 3 on a 800mm uh, G4 or thereabout but if you have games that do take advantage of that or you play Quake 3 and want every frame it uh, can get some uh, noticeable uplift um, Halo is quite playable now, it's not perfect but it's a lot better so when I started out with this system we can see that I had about 21 f less than 21 frames with the original 800 with no L3 cache and a U42 MX and now I'm up to 36 frames almost. So yeah, that's a pretty big bump. Now that the uh, mod and uh, benchmarks are behind us, I want, want to talk a little bit about why I wanted to make this video and uh, do this mod. I haven't found anyone else doing the combination of the hardware ID mod and uh, BIOS flash on a GeForce 3 Ti 200 or 500. And the GeForce 3 Ti200 is fairly common compared to the higher end cards and it's fairly cheap. So this mod is quite attractive. This card for example I got for more or less free, I traded something for it. So instead of going out and try to buy a GeForce 3, this was for me at least easier and I didn't see any point in spending more and it also proves that there's no reason you could can't put a TI 200 or 500 in your Mac now I would recommend getting the TI 200 with the uh, 500 mesh RAM from what I've read that's fairly common that they have faster RAM they did after all come out after the GeForce 3 if I recall so the newer but lower clock other than that I don't think it's much else to add so if you want to play with us, we have a Discord server and we host Quake and Unreal and other games so you can play with us on your either your mod machine or your P or retro PC or your retro Mac. We have games for everyone. Check out the link in the description for the Discord link. And have a nice day.